So I'm back over at Forest Fed Farm, you guys, to help him take his six pigs to the butcher. So I'm really excited to show you guys this process. This is my first time taking animals to the butcher. If you guys saw my other videos about processing pigs, I've been lucky enough to do it all at my own house. So I wanna show you what it looks like when you're raising your own animals on a small scale as a farmer, taking it to market. So whether you're already doing this or you wanna do it in the future, um, whether it's pigs or some other animal, this is gonna be really valuable for you because we're gonna show you loading the trailer and going to the butcher and we're gonna be able to talk with the butcher himself and get some tips from him as well. So, so in, or in order to get to that permanent structure over there, Kyle's gotta get the pigs from where the last spot that he had them move to, to there. So he's just gotta do a couple quick moves that he's gonna do with the nets and then we'll be to that permanent structure. Come on, So here's how it's all set up. This is temporary, but you know, there's no way these pigs could get out of this T-post cattle panel. And then it's all attached with the T-post clips. Kyle's setting up the final fence now. Uh, we'll be getting that hot as well. This is the door that we're gonna let them in. And all we did is these this cattle pedal, we bent it uh, behind that T-post. Um, so that it would fit and this will not be able to be pushed backwards. We'll have the net all set up. The pigs will be in this paddock. This door will be open. Uh, there will be food in there that will attract them there. And then Kyle or someone's gonna come behind them and close the door. And then we'll start working them inside of the enclosure to push them into that trailer. So now Kyle's setting up the final paddock here and he just brought up a really great point, which is all of this grass is gonna really attract them. They, these pigs love it. So what we're gonna do once we get them in here is actually move these fences up to block them off. So they're just in this muddy area and they're gonna be more encouraged to go to the food that we're gonna put over there. So three are going in extremely easy, but the other three well, I guess we got four in there now. These two are being a little bit ornery. They're more nervous. One of these got shocked on accident in the other pen right before he walked in. So he's just a little bit more scared. Kyle is just applying a little bit of pressure, trying to get closer to them, encouraging them to move forward. But you see he's being very patient. As soon as the pig realizes that you're trying to make it go somewhere, that's when it is gonna stop and go the opposite way. Why do you set this up like this for your pigs? Because we had a disaster with me when we tried to load up our, our pigs on the trailer. Yeah, so I've been a part of a few different um, pig loadouts and they all go different. You can't ever trust that a pig is gonna do what you want because it won't. They have a mind of their own and they're huge and you're never gonna directionally make it go one way or another. So um, last September, we were loading 15 pigs to go to a processor and I came up with this idea of just a couple cattle panels, uh, hog panels with some T-posts and then kind of creating a funnel and then just having a little door that quickly opens and shuts. Mm -hmm. And then basically just using something that they know and trust, which is a bucket of feed every day because I'm every day, twice a day, I'm feeding them with it. Walking them in with the bucket as normal and feeding them in their troughs as normal and um, keeping things as familiar as possible because obviously this is a unique situation there's a trailer, there's this hog panel, and there's usually a few of us that are doing it. So trying to normalize the situation for them um, and then trying to just keep everyone cool and calm. The first few times you do it, from experience, you are more stressed than the pig is. Um, and so they can read that. And so just try to keep it stress-free and just slowly work them in. It may take 10, 15 minutes, it may take two hours, but if you can have a situation where you just shut a door and they're in there with no stress, that's the way to do it. So I was just thinking, you know, this setup that you just did, you said it was 60 bucks. So it's very cheap. This is also mobile. Yep. So let's say you have 10 acres and you know, this time it worked out where his pigs were finished here. He probably planned for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now let's say for some of the situation, you're another part of your property. Now it's mobile. You can move it to somewhere else. 
The other thing, so what I'm doing at my house right now is I'm building a permanent one, mm -hmm. a permanent setup, so that it doesn't matter what type of animal I get, whether it's a pig or a sheep or whatever, I can train them in that, yep. and we can also load them into that. So you could just build a permanent setup, but that's gonna that's gonna cost me over a thousand dollars. This is sixty bucks, right. and it you know it took us thirty minutes to set this up. And to add to that, if you do a permanent one, that's great, but you do want it almost in the center of the property, mm -hmm. so then you could always plan to finish them out, mm -hmm. and then you're not having to do so many moves to get them there to load out. We had to do one paddock shift to get them to where they needed to go. Um, it was planned out, you know, you could do a lot of the math. There's numbers out there you could use as a guideline to figure out how many, how many, you know, fence distances you're going to take to make them out and how many animal pressures. There's other variables like weather and stuff, but you could pretty much get a pretty close dialed guess on where you're going to start the yeah. pigs and where they're going to finish to do loadouts. And I always think that you should have access points all over a property. Like we, when we got here, there was no access points. I put a gate at pretty much every corner. So no matter how or where we finish pigs, we had a place to load them out. So at this point, what we'll do is there'll be two or three of us typically, depends on the amount of pigs and the size of uh, loading pen you make. Um, we'll have pig boards, which are over there. And it's just a physical flat barrier that is a piece of plywood with cut with a handle and so we keep it low and we create a wall with all of us and just slowly push them forward forcing them to go in it might be stressful for a few minutes but then once they're in there it's good um, I like to err on the side of a few minutes of stress on them then 24 hours of stress on you and them trying to make sure they get to the processor in time for their uh, processing dates but this for us has worked really well um, this is the second time we've done it, and so far it's been pretty much stress-free for all of us. All right guys, so loading went pretty well. As you saw there, there was some difficulty getting those pigs off. We just had another farmer come. He, the pigs just jumped right off. So, you know, it's just gonna depend on, on your pigs and their personality and if they're relaxed enough. So be prepared for having to shove them off possibly. So you have to keep cows in front of you open the door. So the pigs come inside. You shut it right here. And you hook it up on each end. Come through. Mm -hmm. You ready to go out to this way. You push this rail That's a skinning table? Skin it. Skinning. Not to be done. You use a hook right here. And I use this. Split out in half. Yeah, cut in half. Yep. And now you go to the rail over there. And you go to the skin right here. Mm -hmm. And after that, you go straight to the beard. Cool. Wow! Oh my God! Wow! Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody. Yeah. Love you too. Thank you, Alex. All right, man. You welcome. Ultimately, the problem we see is the general backyard farmer or somebody that's just going to top out a pig or two for yep. themselves or mm -hmm. them and their family mm -hmm. a year. They haven't really done the research, and they've just not been fed out. Mm -hmm. the way they need to be fed out. Oh, um, oh they come in no fat cap on Yes. Oh, wow. So mm. a pig with no fat cap, mm. and whether it's an inch and a half or two and a half, depending on the breed and how much you fed it, sure. um, that makes cutting the quality cuts that you want hard to do. Right. Mm. These pigs, you know, they're they're going to be great. They've got at least an inch and a half, inch and three quarter fat cap on them. Right. So, so what are those, those home growers, what do they do wrong? What do they need to do to get a, they a better fat cap? They don't feed them enough regularly mm -hmm. um, from the time from the time you wean a hog to butcher weight should average about 900 pounds of feed per pig okay you know and that's not necessarily on a confinement um, that's that's for sure in confinement raising but even on pasture they need they, they still need four to six pounds a day to keep the growth going <laughs> because very few hogs can actually 
grow at a at a good rate on pasture alone. Would have liked to talk to the butcher a little bit more, but he's busy, so I won't let him get back to it. Also, you guys, this is a non-USDA uh, yeah. certified place. Um, there's a bunch of butcheries that are just, uh, I believe it's uh, state certified. So if you're doing uh, direct to customer sales, uh, CSAs, or anything like that, this is the type of butcher uh, that you'd want to use. If you want to sell to restaurants, grocery stores, um, things like that, then you're going to need the USDA certified butcher to do that. <laughs>